April 10th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Joshua chapters 15 through 17 of the Old Testament. The land allotted to the tribe of Judah by its clans reached to the borders of Edom, to the wilderness of Zin in the Negev far to the south. Their southern border started at the southern tip of the Salt Sea, extended south of the Scorpion Ascent, crossed to Zin, went up from the south to Kadesh Barnea, crossed to Hezron, went up to Adar, and turned toward Karka. It then crossed to Asmon, extended to the stream of Egypt, and ended at the sea. This was their southern border. The eastern border was the Salt Sea to the mouth of the Jordan River. The northern border started north of the Salt Sea at the mouth of the Jordan went up to Beth Hagla, crossed north of Beth Arabah, and went up to the stone of Bowen, son of Reuben. It then went up to Debur, from the valley of Achor, turning northward to Gilgal, which is opposite the pass of Adumman, south of the valley, crossed to the waters of En Shemesh, and extended to En Rogel. It then went up the valley of Ben Hinnom, to the slope of the Jebusites on the south, that is Jerusalem, going up to the top of the hill opposite the valley of Ben Hinnom to the west, which is at the end of the valley of the Rephaites to the north. It then went up from the top of the hill to the spring of the waters of Naphtoah, extended to the cities of Mount Ephron, and went to Bala, that is, Curious Jerem. It then turned from Bala westward to Mount Seir crossed to the slope of Mount Jerem on the north, that is Kesselon, descended to Beth Shemesh, and crossed to Timnah. It then extended to the slope of Ekron to the north, went toward Shikaron, crossed to Mount Bala, extended to Jabneel, and ended at the sea. The western border was the Mediterranean Sea. These were the borders of the tribe of Judah and its clans. Caleb, son of Jephaniah, was assigned to Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, within the tribe of Judah, according to the Lord's instructions to Joshua. Arba was the father of Anak. Caleb drove out from there three Anakites, Shishai, Ammon, and Talmai, descendants of Anak. From there he attacked the people of Debur. Debur used to be called Kiriath Sefer. Caleb said to the man who attacks and captures Curious Sefer, I will give my daughter Aska as a wife. When Athniel, son of Kinez, Caleb's brother, captured it, Caleb gave Aksa, his daughter, to him as a wife. One time, Aksa came and charmed her father so that she could ask him for some land. When she got down from monkey, Caleb said to her, What would you like? She answered, Please give me a special present, since you have given me the land in the Negev. Now give me springs of water. So he gave her both upper and lower springs. This is the land assigned to the tribe of Judah by its clans. These cities were located at the southern extremity of Judah's tribal land near the border of Edom. Kabzeel, Eder, Jager, Kina, Demona, Adadah, Kadesh, Hazor, Ithnan, Ziph, Telam, Beloth, Hazor, Adita, Kiriath Hezron, that is Hazor, Amem, Shema, Molada, Hazor Gadah, Heshbon, Beth Pele, Hazor Shual, Beersheba, Biziothea, Baala, Iam, Ezem, El Tolad, Kiesel, Horma, Zikleg, Madmana, Sansana, Labaoth, Shilhim, Ain, and Rimmon, a total of twenty nine cities in their towns. These cities were in the lowlands Eshtael, Zora, Ashna, Zanoa, and Ganem, Tapua, Enem, Jarmuth, Adullam, Soko, Azika, Sharam, Adathaim, 
and Gadira, or Gadiratheum, a total of 14 cities and their towns, Zenon, Hadasha, Migdalgad, Delian, Mizpah, Jokthiel, Lakish, Bozkath, Eglon, Kaban, Lamas, Kitlish, Gadiroth, Beth Dagon, Nema, and Makeda, a total of 16 cities and their towns, Libna, Ether, Ashan, Ifta, Ashna, Nazib, Kiila, Axib, and Marisha, a total of nine cities and their towns. Ekron and its surrounding towns and settlements from Ekron westward, all those in the vicinity of Ashdod and their towns. Ashdod with its surrounding towns and settlements, and Gaza with its surrounding towns and settlements, as far as the stream of Egypt and the border at the Mediterranean Sea. These cities were in the hill country, Shamir, Jatur, Soko, Dana, Kiriasana, that is Debur, Anab, Eshtimo, Anim, Goshen, Holon, and Gilo, a total of 11 cities and their towns. Arab, Duma, Ishan, Jainim, Beth Tapua, Afika, Hamta, Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, and Zior, a total of nine cities and their towns. Mayon, Carmel, Zif, Jetta, Jezreel, Jokdeum, Zanoa, Cain, Gibeah, and Timna, a total of ten cities and their towns. Halhal, Bethzer, Gidor, Mayarath, Bethanoth, and Eltikon, a total of six cities and their towns. Kiriath Baal, that is Kiriath Jerem, and Rabbah, a total of two cities and their towns. These cities were in the desert Beth Araba, Midin, Sekeka, Nibshan, the city of salt, and En Gedai a total of six cities and their towns. The men of Judah were unable to conquer the Jebusites living in Jerusalem. The Jebusites live with the people of Judah in Jerusalem to this very day. The land allotted to Joseph's descendants extended from the Jordan at Jericho to the waters of Jericho to the east, through the desert and on up from Jericho into the hill country of Bethel. The southern border extended from Bethel to Luz and crossed to Archite territory at Ataroth. It then descended westward to Japhlite territory as far as the territory of lower Beth Haran and Gezer and ended at the sea. Joseph's descendants Manasseh and Ephraim were assigned to their land. The territory of the tribe of Ephraim by its clans included the following. The border of their assigned land to the east was Ataroth Adar, as far as Upper Beth Haran. It then extended on to the sea, with Michmathath on the north. It turned eastward to Teanath Shiloh, and crossed it on the east to Genoa. It then descended from Genoa to Ataroth and Nara, touched Jericho, and extended to the Jordan River. From Tapua it went westward to the valley of Cana and ended at the sea. This is the land assigned to the tribe of Ephraim by its clans. Also included were the cities set apart for the tribe of Ephraim within Manasseh's territory along with their towns. The Ephraimites did not conquer the Canaanites living in Gezer. The Canaanites live among the Ephraimites to this very day and do hard labor as their servants. The tribe of Manasseh, Joseph's firstborn son, was also allotted land. The descendants of Maker, Manasseh's firstborn, and the father of Gilead received land, for they were warriors. They were assigned Gilead and Bashan. 
The rest of Manasseh's descendants were also assigned land by their clans, including the descendants of Abiezer, Helik, Asriel, Shechem, Hefer, and Shemida. These are the male descendants of Manasseh, son of Joseph, by their clans. Now Zelophehad, son of Hefer, son of Gilead, son of Maker, son of Manasseh, had no sons, only daughters. These are the names of his daughters, Mala, Noah, Hagla, Milka, and Tirzah. They went before Eleazar the priest, Joshua, son of Nun, and the leaders, and said, The Lord told Moses to assign us land among our relatives. So Joshua assigned them land among their uncles, as the Lord had commanded. Manasseh was allotted ten shares of land in addition to the land of Gilead and Bashan east of the Jordan, for the daughters of Manasseh were assigned land among his sons. The land of Gilead belonged to the rest of the descendants of Manasseh. The borders of Manasseh went from Asher to Michmethath, which is near Shechem. It then went south toward those who live in Tapua. The land of Tapua belonged to Manasseh. But Tapua, located on the border of Manasseh, belonged to the tribe of Ephraim. The border then descended southward to the valley of Kana. Ephraim was assigned cities there among the cities of Manasseh. But the border of Manasseh was north of the valley and ended at the sea. Ephraim's territory was to the south and Manasseh's to the north. The sea was Manasseh's western border, and their territory touched Asher on the north and Issachar on the east. Within Issachar's and Asher's territory, Manasseh was assigned Bethshin, Ibliam, the residence of Dor, Endor, the residence of Teanach, the residence of Megiddo, the three of Napheth, and the towns surrounding all these cities. But the men of Manasseh were unable to conquer these cities. The Canaanites managed to remain in those areas. Whenever the Israelites were strong militarily, they forced the Canaanites to do hard labor, but they never totally conquered them. The descendants of Joseph said to Joshua, Why have you assigned us only one tribal allotment? After all, we have many people, for until now the Lord has enabled us to increase in number. Joshua replied to them, since you have so many people, go up into the forest and clear out a place to live in the land of the Perizzites and Rephaites, for the hill country of Ephraim is too small for you. The descendants of Joseph said, The whole hill country is inadequate for us, and the Canaanites living down in the valley in Beth Sheen, and its surrounding towns and in the valley of Jezreel have chariots with iron-rimmed wheels. Joshua said to the family of Joseph, to both Ephraim and Manasseh, You have many people and great military strength. You will not have just one tribal allotment. The whole hill country will be yours. Though it is a forest, you can clear it, and it will be entirely yours. You can conquer the Canaanites, though they have chariots with iron-rimmed wheels and are strong. God, first and foremost, thank you for your patience in me trying to get through all those verses. Ah, a lot of interesting words in there. So I apologize if I said anything wrong, but hopefully what you need people to hear out of it is, is what they get um, beyond my stumbling over some of those. Thank you for your grace with that. You know how this ends where the descendants of Joseph are, are fussing and probably whining a little bit at Joshua. and He's like, you don't get it. You can have the whole hill country. You just got to clear some trees and it's all yours. And have I not shown you how sovereign God is? If you, with faith, do this, it doesn't matter if they ha have iron-rimmed wheels and are strong. Don't you see all the things that God has done for you? Don't you see? I think if I was Joshua, I would be incredibly frustrated this time. I know if I was you, God, I would be so frustrated because I know it's not just the descendants of Joseph who can't see 
literally the forest for the trees. We all do this. We all see what is immediately in front of us and make decisions and conclusions and even prayer requests on what we see. You built the iron rimmed wheels. You made those people strong. You put that forest there. Do the descendants of Joseph not understand how big you are? Why do we make you so small? I have found in my life, God, and you already know this, that one of the ways that I know you are so big is in the details. These three chapters, and actually they're not very long chapters at that, but these three chapters are just filled with details, filled with names of cities and areas and borders and uh, some military strategic information. It is filled with details. And in every single one of those details is you, that you allowed them to conquer those cities through obviously disobedience or some places that they didn't conquer. Um, you chose not to put those stories in the Bible, but we know from the past, we know every time they didn't obey, things didn't go the way that they were supposed to. We see you in every single detail in here. You didn't have to say, these are all the areas that I give you in such detail. You could have just said in the Bible, from here to here, and these are the borders, and within it were the families. But I love the details. I love the details, God. Because sometimes you are too big. And I think you will always be too big for us to even grasp that concept. But I can begin to understand how big you are when you come into my life and you pay attention to the small details that those somehow are important enough to you to pay attention to. That is amazing to me. Small little things like the people that you have put in my life, the relationships that have been good and healthy and bad and unhealthy, and how you have woven those relationships into making a stronger relationship with you. And it was all within all the details of everything that happened within those relationships. The small little blessings that you give me, the beautiful daffodil that's in bloom amongst all the other weeds in my neighbor's yard. <laughs> I love that. The really fat, pregnant, bird that could barely walk on my fence post this morning that I watched while doing dishes. I suspect maybe she's looking for a nest or a good area to build one. How clear the sky was last night and I could see stars. And I knew who put them up there. If this gigantic God who's in control of everything, including taking down the Canaanites with their iron ridden wheels who are strong, and yet he's gentle enough to come into my life and take care of all the small details as well, then why do we continue to see the forest or not see the forest for the trees? Why do we continue to hold on to what we want over what you want for us. I don't have an answer. Well, I have a list of answers. Probably our arrogant selfishness and desire to control things are at the top three of that list. But if we stop each day and be very intentional about all the things that you show us and give us and take care of for us, there would be no question in the minds of the descendants of Joseph if they had just stopped for a second and acknowledged what you had done for them all of those years leading up to that moment. Of course we will clear the forest and have that as our allotment. Of course we will conquer the Canaanites. We have God. We don't need iron rim wheels. Today, God, let me see the forest 
not just the trees right in front of me. Let me see the details within the trees and the forest and all the other incredible blessings that you give me. Let me not get sidetracked or overwhelmed with what I want. But rest in peace for what you want for me. God, I love you so much. In your son's name I pray. Amen.